Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to a new semester. Everyone can hear me okay? Is is my voice all right? Uh, okay, great. All right, so welcome to uh, spring 2022. Uh, wishing you all a blessed new year. Uh, and may the Lord bless you even as you continue to equip yourself uh, for the ministry and everything God has called you for. So uh, this semester, uh, the subject that I'll be taking the course will be Timeless Principles for the Workplace. This is the publication from uh, written by Pastor Ashish. And uh, the PDF version is uh, available uh, uh, on the stream. And, uh, and so you can download it and follow along even as we uh, go through the entire uh, course this semester. All right, so uh, before we begin, shall we uh, begin with a word of prayer? Let's dedicate this entire semester uh, and everything that we're learning. Let's uh, ask the Lord to minister to each one of us that the Holy Spirit will speak to us in, uh, in his own way, uh, that each of us will be ministered in this uh, semester. So uh, maybe one of us could please lead us in prayer. Rupa, uh, is it okay if you can lead us, please? Sure, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Father, we come to your throne of grace with thanksgiving and praise. We enter this semester with your goodness, Lord. Father God, thank you for, for the course you have prepared in during this semester, Lord. Father, especially this marketplace ministry. Please equip each one of us, Holy Spirit God. Please be with our faculty, Pastor Paul, as he ministers unto us, Lord. Fill him anew, afresh, and let him, Father, minister unto us. Teach us your ways, Father God. Bless us with receptive hearts and also oneness in heart as we learn at your feet, Master. Bind us together with your purpose, Father God. In Jesus' name, strengthen us each day as we follow your Father in this course. Teach us, Lord God, Father, new insights, revelations, and new ways to reach out to the lost in the marketplace. Father, bless us with your heart and your fervor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Rupa. Thank you for leading us in prayer. Okay. All right. Uh, so... Let's uh, oh, you know, begin with this book. Now, let me just give you an introduction to uh, what, what this whole subject is all about. Right? Now, many of us may be in the workplace and we may spend a lot of hours in office uh, or many of us may be already in the ministry. Now, even in the ministry, we will get to meet people from different places, different cultures, different settings. Uh, and, and even as we you know, work, maybe even in the business or the workplace or even in ministry, God has given each one of us certain principles that we have to use so that you know, uh, even as we walk this life, we walk a life of integrity. We walk a life of honor. That when people look at us, they say, "Hey, this person, uh, you know, he these these are certain values that he will walk in. This is his character. Uh, these are things that he does. These are things that he does not do." And so, each one of us, uh, uh, you know, uh, even as we journey along in our life. Uh, even some of us may be just housewives or uh, just working from home. But these principles, as we apply it in our lives, uh, we will learn wonderful things. We will learn how to really glorify God in every aspect of our life. Right. So we'll move to chapter one and we'll see what we can learn from chapter one. The chapter one is personal vision and purpose. So if, if you have the documents, if you've downloaded it, you can probably follow along uh, with me even as we 
uh, you know, continue to study this. If you have questions, feel free to post it on the chat. If you'd like to unmute as well, feel free to do that. Right, chapter one. Now, as I was saying, many of us uh, may be in you know, colleges looking to go into the workplace in the near future. Maybe some of us are already in the workplace. So what are some of the principles that we must apply to ourselves so that our lives will be fruitful uh, for the kingdom of God, right? Now, let's look at personal vision and purpose. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh, let me read that. God has made us what we are, and in our union with Christ Jesus, he has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has already prepared for us to do. Now, it says here that God has already designed a purpose for each one of us. So each one of us in our life, we have a purpose. Now, here's the thing. You may have learned this even in uh, who we are in Christ or fulfilling God's purpose for your life, where there are two purposes. One is the general purpose of God, right? meaning all of us to get to know the Lord Jesus, to live a life to pleasing in his sight, uh, and to know that we've been created by him to give glory to God in our lives. That's the general purpose. And then we have a personal purpose for our lives, right? So now these specific personal purposes could be anything. Maybe some of us may be in business. Uh, some of us may be in sports and entertainment, government, uh, in whatever mountain that God has called us for. These specific purposes are what uh, become, are what we become professionally, right? Now, many of us may have heard this, you know, this whole aspect of full-time ministry, part-time ministry. Now, we may be in the workplace, but yet God is working in our lives, even in the workplace. It's not like God is saying, okay, only those who are pastors and those who are in ministry, you know, God's, you know, blessings are there on them or God has, you know, a special anointing upon them. No, even if we are in the workplace, we may be doing something very small. Uh, but if God has called you to do that, remember that God will always be there even in that workplace, right? He is part of our life. He is an integral part of every purpose that God has called us for, right? Uh, it is important that each one of us, in the beginning of our careers, right, uh, we, 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 we each take a step and we live out that divine purpose. Now, I know some of us may be feeling, okay, I'm going into ministry so why should I learn this? How is it going to help me? I'm not going to uh, go to an office and work there eight hours a day. Now, remember, even in ministry, right, uh, eventually as ministry grows, you will have an office. You will have people working alongside with you. And, and so it's very important to set standards in, in our lives, set standards uh, in our personal life, in our personal walk with God, right? Now, foundation, what we build on matters, right? What we build on matters. Uh, let's read Matthew chapter 7, 24 and 26. Yes, could one of us please read that? Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 26. Yes, Shall go I read, ahead. sir? Go ahead. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27 says, <clears throat> Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken them him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them 
will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Avni. So we see here that Jesus is bringing this wonderful example. He's saying some of them build on rock, some of them build on sand. So what we build on, our foundation really matters, right? Uh, our spiritual foundation is important. Now, even as we look at, you know, a, a, a structure, any structure, the higher the structure has to be, the deeper the foundation goes, right? We can't have, you know, if you want to have a 10 story uh, uh, building to be built, you can't have a three feet foundation. It's not going to work out. The building's going to be weak. It's going to, you know, if there's a heavy wind or even if there is, you know, a couple of years pass by, you, you may find cracks, you may find the, you know, the building may just even be so weak that it can just collapse to its ground. Why? Because the foundation is not strong. So if you have to build a 10 story building, you have to go down at least 20 feet deep into the ground to get a strong foundation. So as ministers of God, what we build on is very important. We must hear the things that the Lord Jesus has taught us. Good foundations are very important in our professional life. Right Now, uh, uh, maybe some of us are already in the ministry, you've begun, or maybe some of us are in the workplace. Um, and so take time. Take effort to lay a good foundation. Right? Here's the thing. When and somebody, you know, when, when an engineer is building a home, it may be a beautiful house, you know, these uh it, it looks very beautiful. And so he may the architect may show you the house and say, Okay, this is the end product of your house. This is how your house is gonna look. We may say, hey, wow. This looks beautiful. This is what I want in. Uh, this is what I want my house to look like. But when the foundation is happening, uh, the architect or even the owner or people around are not going to look at the foundation and say, "Oh, wow, what a wonderful foundation!" Right? Oh, the foundation looks very beautiful. Nobody's going to say that. It does not look beautiful. It, it it's just nothing, right? Uh, nobody may appreciate it. Nobody may come and click photos and say, wow, what a wonderful uh, foundation. Nobody may even care about it. But the fact of the matter is that foundation is the most important part of the entire house. Because if that foundation was not right, the house is going to collapse. And so each one of us take time. It's very important. The Lord Jesus is teaching us. Take time to lay a good foundation. Maybe some of us are planning to start your own ministry after this course or even after your BTH uh, or whatever you have planned for, or maybe start a business and simultaneously do ministry. Here's the thing. Lay a good foundation. Lay good standards. And when you lay that good foundation, what you build on that, on the next phase, will be very strong. It'll be very strong, right? Now, let me give you this example, right? Uh, uh, again, I'm going to give you examples of Mangalore because I was uh, I'm in Mangalore. Uh, uh, when we went, when we came to APC Mangalore, we were about ten odd people in the church, and uh, and I realized that there was nothing really set there there was no core team uh, and so we had to begin from scratch right so uh, we 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 had two three of them older folks to be part of a core team and then we slowly began to you know i, I remember i used to tell the church folks we were only about nine ten of us we would meet every week and we would discuss on how to how this church should be three years or five years from now. 
and so we would we would come up with uh, we would write out our plans and one of the things that we always you know uh, focus on is you know something like you know setting right standards no gossip uh, be available for our church members right be uh, you know transparent uh, in terms of funds and money and all of that so these are certain foundations that we laid so even now in the church uh, many of them who visit our church they come they stay back they say i like this church because people don't talk about others and why is that why is there uh, uh, you know there's no gossip there's no uh, you know uh, people like you know saying okay this person is high this person will know all of us are equal and so these standards have been set the foundations have been set many years ago and so even now three four years down the line now as we are a growing church there are certain standards and we know that hey this is what it is this is how we talk this is how we uh, portray ourselves and these are certain standards that we follow and what's happening your foundation is strong you're building something that will not fall down very easily proverbs 24 27 says don't build your house and establish a home until your fields are ready and you are sure that you can earn a living it's a wonderful verse it, it it's so such a practical verse uh, do the important work first and then plan for the comforts right uh, uh, yes uh, thank you christopher for uh, answering that question yeah so do the important work first and then plan for comfort sometimes uh, in our personal walk in our personal life uh, you know we are in, we may be in a hurry to see success or prosperity in our lives right? for example if we start a ministry we, we may want to see hey, uh, you know 500 people in one year very fast people inviting you to many places if it happens that's great but if it doesn't happen it's all right it's important to work first and then plan for comfort so then plan for success and then plan for things ahead uh ensure that you lay a good foundation ensure that your skills uh, that the lord has blessed you with are relevant and useful for the work that god has called you for now maybe some of us god has called us to be you know evangelists or for example maybe you know to start your uh, start your own business what are the skills so there could be verbal skills there could be non verbal skills right? communication skills uh, professional skills management skills problem solving decision making negotiation skills uh, planning and organizing very important in ministry as well leadership skills again very important in ministry and then you gain knowledge and develop your skills so all this is part of the foundation that you're building on you are you and i even as we study even as we learn as we do all this we are setting ourselves to fulfill the vision that god has given us right so for example if you want to be a preacher or a pastor we know one thing you have to be a good reader you have to be able to read because you have to read the word to spend time reading meditating right you have to be uh, good in speaking at least communicating well so these are simple things and we begin to develop on that right so each one of us uh, if uh, whatever god has called you for uh, uh, whatever calling or uh, uh, whatever sphere of influence right we can develop ourselves for that right grow in those skills now next point your personal priorities are foundational right uh, 
Let's read Mark chapter 12 and verse 30. Mark 12 and verse 30. Yes, could one of us please read that? Mark 12 and verse 30. Can I read? Yes, please go ahead, Charles. And Mark 12, 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Charles. So, in addition to laying, you know, a good foundation, a spiritual foundation, a professional foundation, very, very important, right, is remember that personal character, values, your attitudes are the ones that help us in our personal walk with God, uh, in our fulfillment of God's purpose in our lives, right? What, is, uh, what does it say here? This is the first commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, with everything that we are. So no matter what we do in our lives, whether it is business, whether we are working in the private sector, in the public sector, in sports and entertainment, whatever that God has called us to do, this should be our foundation. This should be our priority. We say, God, even as I learn you know, all these, develop my skills and all these uh, talents that you've blessed me with. My key responsibility or my key role is to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. That is the first responsibility that we have as believers. So personal character, values and attitudes are very important, right? Uh, knowing and establishing those personal priorities are very important. You know, as young parents, some of the things that we try to do is we, we, you know, impart things into our children. Right? We impart, we tell them about, hey, you know, this is what God is. This is what God did for you. You teach them how to pray. You tell them, okay, Sundays is church. This is why we go to church. And so what are we doing? We are imparting good character. We are imparting values and attitudes in, in, in the child because even as they grow, they will recognize their gifts and callings. But even as they recognize that, the key should be, Lord, I want to give you glory in all these things that you have blessed me with. Right? If loving God and worshiping God and serving the Lord is priority, then everything around will be centered to the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Your professional work, your, your family, everything will be centered in Christ. Because why? We love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And so our work, our ministry, our family is an outflow of that love. Right, so uh, if if the choices if, if in the family, if there are certain choices that we should make, it's all it all it all comes down to the foundation that was laid. You know, uh, let me share this example in our church uh, in Mangalore. There's there's an older couple. They are the husband is ninety years old, and the wife is eighty five years old. And they drive to church, right? and an uh, older couple. And they come Sunday after Sunday. Every Sunday they're there. Right? Uh, and so I, I asked this uncle, Uncle, how is it that you're so, you know, you, 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 even at the age of 90, you want to do so much for God. You have so, so much of zeal, so much of passion. Uh, you're there on Sundays, even though you may have sicknesses in your body, you know, he's 90 years old and she, auntie is 85 years old. But they're there. And the, one of the things this gentleman said to me was, he said, I've set certain priorities that, that no matter what, I will be at church on Sunday to glorify God. Right? So it's very important that 
you know, these foundations are laid and they're strong, right? Uh, once it's laid in good ground, that's when even as we grow, even as we mature in Christ, we know what is important and what is not important, right? Sometimes, you know, uh, I remember this, uh, just we, we finished with Christmas and, uh, you know, Christmas is a time of friends and family and getting together. And it's a wonderful season, especially for each one of us. But here's the important thing. You know, we have people coming, friends, relatives, they come home, we all have good time together. All that is good, it's wonderful. But if Chris, but if all that becomes priority and Christ is not the center of it, the whole point of Christmas is lost. Right? Uh, uh, I remember my friend, uh, a known person of mine, uh, a, good, a good friend, and uh, on Christmas Day, I called him, I wished him, and I said, hey, uh, blessed Christmas to you. Uh, so how was church? And he said, hey, uh, I didn't go to church. I said, what happened? No, we had family and we had friends all come over. We had a Christmas Eve. Uh, you know, we, he's a good believer, you know, but they all spent time together. They had a good time together. And then I told him, here's the thing I told him. I told him, see, it's wonderful to, you know, come together and have this fellowship and all of it. But you missed the whole point of Christmas. That on Christmas Day, if you haven't gone to church, then, you know, the priorities are not right. So I explained to him, I, uh, you know, I told him, see, all this is important, but set priorities. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Let him be the priority. And out of that, everything will flow. And of course, there were COVID restrictions and all of it. But, uh, but many of them were, you know, had, churches were open. And so what I'm trying to say is, Give importance to God first. Let other things flow out of that. Have we'll also talk about work-life balance in the coming uh, uh, in coming chapters of this course. We'll talk about work-life balance as well. How, uh, as as men and women of God, we are we should have a work-life balance. We should work. We should have time for family. We should have t personal time. And so we'll also talk about that going ahead. So. Next point, be clear of your about your non-negotiables. Let's read Luke chapter 9, verse 62. Go ahead. Could one of us please read uh, Luke 9 and verse 62? Sir, shall I read it? Yes, go ahead, Rupa. Luke 9, 62. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Right. Thank you, Rupa. So Jesus is saying something very important here, which is if you've started something or you've, you, you've planned to do something, don't start it and look back and say, okay, I don't want to do this. Let's look at the context of this. There are some things that you and I cannot sell out on just for the sake of making money or professional benefits, right? So, for example, your boss may come and tell you, hey, why don't you just, uh, uh, you know, uh, put the extra, you know, points on your scores or why don't you, you know, just tell the other boss that, you know, you already did this work or the work has been assigned to somebody else or somebody else did the assignment and then you they're asking you know your boss may tell you you tell them that you did it or there are certain things remember that um even in ministry people may say why don't you do this or why don't you do that set non-negotiables there's no negotiations right so for example as a church as a ministry one of the things that I personally follow is I don't follow I don't handle cash no money right everything is online on the account uh, so there should be a wire to wire transfer uh, all our vendors everything is done online right 
non negotiable right if the vendors come and say okay take this cash this is the cash for the uh, balance amount no it, you need to wire the amount back to the to the church funds so there are certain things that we have to set in our lives there's a non negotiable right for example even as in a family you know uh, I, i i always tell my kids uh, my elder one especially I say without prayer no sleeping it's a non negotiable you have to pray and then you have to sleep right? unless they are you know they have fever or they're not feeling well and that's all right but you have to pray and then you have to sleep without prayer no sleep meaning what i'm trying to say is uh, you 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 know you, you can't negotiate on that finish your prayer go to sleep and so it it may sound very simple uh, you know uh, for for a 6 year old uh, why are you forcing the child without prayer no what is happening is we're setting priorities we're setting a good foundation right and so even in your personal life in your professional life set non negotiables there's this very interesting saying right if you don't stand for anything you know if you don't stand for something you will fall for anything right you got to stand for something right there'll be areas in your life where you cannot bargain it's a big no right uh, this would include integrity honesty you know dealing fairly with people uh people in your business you need to respect them love them right uh stand by them don't compromise right so each one of us must set certain non negotiables right now if you don't have any non negotiables then we will fall for anything if your boss tells you uh you know just uh write this email and tell them that you know we'll complete this work uh and and you know that we it's something that cannot be done and we are you know you're sending the work to some other team then you know you you know it's very easy to say okay boss and then go send that email but if we have certain you know non negotiable set in our life we can say uh so i think that this would be wrong on my part and these are certain things that i follow and so i will not be able to do that right so uh be clear on your on what you can do your non negotiables yes charles go ahead you have a question raise your hand ah uh, it's not a question pastor but uh, about non negotiables um you you are talking about that um when i were i joined the i joined the the christian ministry of child evangelism i was a head teacher of a primary school and the, after training i went to the school and i told them uh, i look for another head teacher i can't I can't continue they said no i will keep it for you this this job you were away for four months now uh, we, we that, you have let us down i told them i cannot afford i cannot afford to do two things uh, i will i will betray one and i wouldn't love to betray you i want to remain friends with you so the director for the school understood it and allowed me but again uh, i was to meet the director for child evangelism fellowship so in child evangelism fellowship uh, they have a financial policy that ask god and tell his people so there is no steady salary you you have to ask god and tell his people so he told me charles why don't you keep doing the work for teaching but also doing partly for me children ministry i told him he who has called me is going to see me through i cannot do that then he told me for me i have told you that there is no money here so you must know that you are going to suffer i said yeah i know i am going to pay the cost so my non negotiable was 
he who has called me is going to feed me. Uh, yeah, I spent, I had the costs that I paid, but later it was okay. Now um, I'm okay. And and when we meet, he says, wow, you, you were so determined, but he did not know that it was non-negotiable that I should not serve two masters. I thank you. Right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Charles. Uh, yes, there will be times uh, we will have to make decisions. Uh, but here's the important thing uh, that we also get clarity from God. We know that, OK, God, I know that this is you asking me to do this. And then when we have that assurance, when we have that conviction, uh, just like Charles said, you know, the one who has called you is faithful. But on the other side, uh, if God is calling us to work, uh, you can work. You 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 can do that. You know, that is uh, like we began the class by saying that it's not like God is only pleased with those in full time ministry. No, uh, if God has called you to work, you can also work. You can also do ministry. Uh, but even as we do that, we should be, uh, you know, even as we do these things, we should be wise and we should have good foundations uh, laid before us. Uh, then some of the other personal priorities or non-negotiables that may come is uh, uh, people questioning your faith, people giving you tricky decisions at times. Now, remember, the enemy will, you know, attack our weak points, right? Uh, there will be times when he may say uh, the enemy may target you for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. But, uh, I remember when I was in the workplace, uh, we started this small prayer fellowship. And for a couple of months, they were targeting me and they're saying, you know, you need to stop this. This is not something that, uh, you know, and I was very immature in Christ. I was just a young boy. Uh, and I said, you know, I took it up as a challenge and I said, no, I will not stop. Uh, maybe in some areas I didn't walk in wisdom, but uh, but there are some things that I learned out of that. And I said, God, I know that you are with me. You have called me to do this. So uh, you will bless the work uh, uh, that you have given me here. So there will be big situations, small situations where we will be challenged. But uh, this is the time where we draw our strength from our spiritual walk with God, meaning our spiritual foundations. If we are in the workplace, suddenly the you know that somebody is asking you to do something wrong or not in line with God's word, asking you to just say a small lie. What are you and I going to do? It's the boss who's told us to say this. We have to say, no, God, God has not given me this, you know, the spirit. And, and so you and I can say, no. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say this. Uh, and we can take a stand. It's a non-negotiable. So where do we gain our strength from? Remember, in the mornings we wake up, we pray and we seek God and we say, God, grant me the grace, grant me the favor. That's where we gain our strength from. Remember, at nights we sit and pray as a family or we read the word and we meditate on God's word. We draw our strength from those places. Right? And we refuse to, you know, uh, uh, stand under pressure uh, by the principles of the world or the things that are not against the things that are against uh, that which God has called us for. So here's the point I'm trying to bring. There will be attacks. There will be non-negotiables, but we have to stand firm. That is why our personal prayer, a personal time with the Lord is very important. Because when that time comes, we can gain our strength out of this, out of the our, our personal walk with God. Then we look at developing a life plan, right? Uh, let's read Proverbs 21 verse 5. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 5. Yes, could one of us please read it? Proverbs 21 and verse 5. Careful planning puts you ahead in the long run. Hurry and scurry puts you further behind. Thank you, Samuel. Careful planning puts you ahead in the long run. 
I, I always say this to myself uh, every time. Right? I, I've written it in a lot of my books and I say it to myself, failing to plan is, fal fl is planning to fail. As children of God, as people that God has called us for, we must plan. It's a must, right? Uh, even as you all have prepared to join this course, plan yourself, right? You can probably plan and say, okay, by the end of 2022, what do I want? What do I want to see myself in 2022? Plan, right? Careful planning puts you ahead in the long run, right? You and I can develop a life plan. You can do a one-year plan. You can do a three-year plan. You can do a five-year plan. You can do a 10-year plan, right? Uh, uh, and, and you begin to review it. You look at it. There will be times when God may, you know, take you in a little di diversion. Or maybe times you realize that, you know, I myself have diverted from the plan which God has given me. So then we can come back and say, okay, God, uh, I thank you for, you know, reminding me. A life plan is a high-level plan of what God wants us to do in our life. And how do we intend to get there? Right Now, remember that the God who created us, who designed us, He knows our plan for our life. Right? He knows what, what, is, what, is, what He wants us to do. So if we plan, there's nothing wrong in planning. When we plan and surrender those plans into God's hand, that is where we will see the, the work coming into place in our lives. I remember in 2012, uh, in 2012 when uh, we were Bible college students, I remember this very clearly. I would tell, I would write down in every piece of paper I would write down one day, you know, uh, I will share the word in church. One day I will lead the worship. I would write it down everywhere. I will lock the door and preach sermons in front of the mirror. Why? Because one day I thought God will open a door for me. And I will one day share. And so there was a plan. There was a focus. And many times... If we don't have a plan, we will tend to lose focus in our life, right? So it's very important that we plan. And oh, if you're, you're if you're not yet married, you can plan about your marriage. This is what I want to do, right? Uh, if you haven't yet have children, plan about that. If you if you uh, haven't you know, uh, if you plan to have a start a business, and maybe you feel that you know it's uh, I don't think I can do it. The COVID, uh, you know, has brought so much of trouble. Plan ahead. Plan ahead. God is in control. Right? Ask God, God, uh, this is what I want to do. How do? You, how can I pursue it? How can I fulfill this call that you've given me? Right? Jeremiah 33, 3, which is a very common, familiar, and powerful verse, says, you will... The message translation says, you will not have all, you know, Jeremiah 33, 3, sorry, call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. I love the message translation. I'll tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. You and I may not have all the details of our lives, but we have a sense of direction. And this will help us to live out our life with purpose and meaning. Right? So if some of us have not made plans for 2022 or even for maybe two years or three year, five year plan, do it. You know, I made a five year plan already. Right? Open the next cell sheet, 22. Here's what I want to do. 23, 24, and 25. So by 2025. Here's what I want to see myself, 2025 December. So what I do is I open the Excel. I read it every now and then, not every day, every now and then. 
remind myself, God, you've been faithful. You've been faithful. And even as we continue to journey along, I look, maybe God may take us through transitions. That's all right. But the bigger purpose, God is fulfilling it in our lives. So here are three important facets that we need to remember even as we plan, right? Um, uh, first one, the person you believe you will become, right? What is the person that God wants you to be? Right? If you if you look at maybe this year, what is it that God wants you? What are the skills that you want to develop? Now, each one of you are in the Bible college. So I'm sure you're going to, you know, wonderfully grow in the word and the Lord is going to minister to you. Uh, even as you spend time in your personal life, your churches, your ministries, the Lord is going to equip you, empower you. That's wonderful. Right? The person that uh, you believe you will become. So, so write it down. Write down. I, I want to see myself as a uh, as an evangelist, or I want to see myself as a pastor of a church. I want to see myself as a businessman, uh, you know, serving uh, the poor community. Or I want to see myself as a businessman who is uh, helping mission organizations. Whatever God has called you, you see, you see it in your mind's eye. The person uh, that God wants you to be. Now, even as I'm saying this, maybe some of us are thinking in our own mind. Uh, yeah, this is what God wants me to be, but uh, you know, I don't know how to take the step. It's all right. Plan it out. Uh, open an Excel sheet or have a diary, have a book. Write down your plans. Right, write it down. Two, the place you believe uh, uh, you should position yourself to occupy. Now, this could be a geographical place or it could be a professional place. Right. So it could be uh, in India or it could be in a different country, it could be different states in India, geographically or professionally, the place that God wants you to be. Maybe God wants you to be in the uh, sports and entertainment or in, in uh, arts and entertainment or maybe uh, you know, in ministry or maybe in, in the IT sector or maybe in uh, the medical field, right? Whatever field that God has called you for, uh, you know, to be an example there. Uh, and you can write it down. Right? Third one is the purpose that which God wants to release in and through your life. Whatever God has called me for, the main purpose is to bless others, to build God's kingdom, uh, to increase the work of God uh, in every area of, of our lives uh, uh, here on earth. So that's the thing. First one, the person that God wants us to be, the place, and then the purpose for which he has called us. Now, before we close, let's quickly look at this example from Abraham. Right? It's a wonderful example. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Again, uh, a very, very familiar verse. I'll just read that quickly. Now, the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Let's look at these three things here. The person that God wanted Abraham to be. What does it say? The person you will be the father of a great nation. Right? The father of a great nation. God saw Abraham as this person, the father of a great nation. And then God tells Abraham, you will inherit a land that I will show you and I will give you an inheritance. This was more of a geographical land. Right? And he says there, I'll give you an inheritance. That's the place where God had for uh, Abraham. And three, what is the purpose? You will be a blessing. And through you, all families of the earth will be blessed. Wonderful. All three. The person, the father of many nations. You will inherit a land which I will show you for you and your descendants. Purpose to be a blessing to the entire nation. 
God called Abraham, but he still didn't know the entire plan. He didn't know the entire details. But he just journeyed in faith. So even as today, uh, you know, each one of us, we begin this new year, I want to encourage each one of you to make a plan. Document a plan for your life. Document the person that God wants you to be. The place, whether geographical or the profession that God wants you to be in. And also the, the purpose that God's called you for. Document it. Review it. Keep looking at it. And maybe, you know, we may not know all of it. Just like Abraham, we are to journey in faith. Amen? Amen. So, uh, uh, maybe next class, I'll give you, uh, you know, some ideas on how to, uh, you know, make these plans. And then uh, uh, we can pick up from the next class. So uh, let's just close in prayer. Uh, yes, could one of us please uh, close in prayer? Uh, Pastor Atai. Uh, Samuel, can you lead us in prayer, please? Sure, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and we thank you for this class. We are grateful to you, Father, for, for your grace, for your abundance grace and uh, your gift of righteousness that you've given to us. And as we journey into this new year, into this new semester, we dedicate our lecturer and each of us into your hands. Uh, as we were looking today, Lord, um, how we could... Uh, set right principles in our lives um, as we get ready to minister um, in our workplace, in our homes, through our lives. Um, and as we are learning these timeless principles, Lord, um, we commit to you. Uh, give us knowledge, give us understanding, uh, give us a deeper revelation of the purpose that you have for each of us. Help us make plans. Help us uh, commit to the desires. Help us commit to our non-negotiables. Um, that we grow stronger and stronger in you. And that we can make a difference. In um, difference everywhere we go. We thank you for Pastor Paul. We thank you for all our classmates. We thank you for this time. And we commit the rest of the day into your hands. Uh, this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Samuel. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you on Monday. God bless. God bless. Thank you, sir.